still so many donations coming in from everyone who promised to match after that last one, like this $84 from Amafui who said dollar per shine. I can do that, less than three. $840 from Anonymous that says matching Anon here, 84 shines, $10 per, honestly netting over three quarters of the shines for the original category in roughly two thirds the time limit is impressive as heck. Just think on that, well done. Let's go audience. It's also $168 here from Raider Monkey that says $2 per shine. Still a fantastic run. Great job by SB. Less than three. Already and one last one here. This is a $740 drop from PB010G. Following through on matching $10 per shine. Donation get. And with that, grab a buddy, grab a backpack, and there's nothing we can't do. Here's Banjo Tui, any percent on N64 being run by Duck. Take it away, my friend. Thank you, thank you. Hello, everybody. It's me again. I was doing Mario Party last night, and here we are for some Banjo Tui Any Percent. My name's Duck, and everybody can introduce yourself on the couch here. Uh, I'm Dingo Slayer. Longster. I'm Connor75. All right. And uh, be right before I start, everybody in chat, spam either red, blue, or green. That's all you got to do. OK. Three, two, one, go. All right, so this run is going to start off real quick here with a skip to uh, skip the Klungo cutscene. And Duck is going to go up to the right side of this wall here, do a backflip and a beak bust and a pretty precise oh. spot. <laughs> no, Ideally, he would have skipped that. But <laughs> yeah. That's all right. We got to see Klungo here. Yeah. Good time for a donation real quick. Uh, <laughs> that's why I failed it, actually. Going right into it then. Here's $100 from Anonymous, our great friend, saying, so hyped to see Banjo-Tooie completely destroyed by Duck on the GDQ stage. Good luck. So these speed shoes aren't required or anything, but they help us get into this loading zone faster, grab the eggs on the way, and now this is the part that Duck was asking about what color Wakunga will be. It is completely random, green, red, or blue for the potion. They all have different animations. So the one we want here is green because it's the fastest animation, but uh, yeah, we'll see which one Green's we get the right best, here. red's the second best, and blue is the worst. So let's see what we get. Yeah, and red makes Klungo huge, so. Red, oh. all right. Red's easy. Yeah. Yeah, technically the slowest because it takes a long time for Klungo to get bigger like that in that animation but it's pretty easy and difficult to mess up. So, won't complain about a red potion. And he gets in this spot over by the gate here to be as close to the loading zone leaving this room as possible, and Klungo will jump over, land on that egg, and Duck's in the perfect spot to hopefully get pushed a little here. By yeah. There's, uh, you want to stand right in the middle of this gate as well as you can. Because during this cutscene, when Klungo leaves the room, he actually pushes you. So we'll see how far we get pushed. Looking like that a pretty a good one. Not bad, not no, bad. Pretty far. Yeah. yeah. All right. It's definitely the easiest one to get a push from. Mm -hmm. So coming up next, Duck is on his way to King Jingling's temple here to get the first free Jiggy in the game. And this will actually be the only Jiggy that we will collect in the entire run because now uh, to beat Banjo-Tooie, all we need is one Jiggy. Last time uh, Banjo-Tooie any percent was in a GDQ four years ago. The route required 14 Jiggies, but due to some uh, new bit clip, uh, glitches that we'll see later on. This is the only Jiggy we need to open Mayhem Temple. Everything else is skippable. Yeah, that saves about 15 minutes compared to the old route. And given this route is now under 30 minutes now, that is a, a huge time improvement. Yeah, and for such a huge game like Banjo-Tooie, <laughs> to bring it down to one Jiggy, just the jiggy they give you at the beginning of the game. It's pretty <laughs> absurd. Faster than BK any percent. <laughs> yeah. 
and the reason we need this jiggy is because every loading zone uh, outside of this area requires you to have the jiggy. There's no way around that. Mm -hmm. But Duck is going uh, this way. There are two ways to leave this area, but he's going in here to uh, talk to Goggles, one of Bottle's children, to get the ability to zoom in, which will be used one time later. And uh, uh, coming up here is actually going to be the reason that he's running on the Japanese version of the game. There is a cutscene as soon as he exits this loading zone, and normally on the NTSCU version, uh, this is not skippable, but right there he skipped the text, and that is why Japanese is faster by five seconds. Yeah, and it's, it's important to, to, uh, to note that I just went through Bottle's house after knowing and witnessing Bottles getting murdered, <laughs> and I talked to his family. <laughs> I just sort of uh, glossed over the, uh, the fact that, the, that Bottles has died. So right here, we're talking to uh, Jiggy Wiggy. Uh, we're about to do one of his puzzles, which basically opens all of the levels. And so this will be the only one we do since we only have one Jiggy. And where the pieces start out for these puzzles is random, so it is a different pattern every time, and you just have to look at where the pieces are and think about very quickly what is the fastest route to put them in their places. And that is a nice 92 puzzle yeah. you got there, Ducks. Not bad. Can't complain. And thankfully, this is the only puzzle we do, so it's just super quick. Mm -hmm. This is the only level in the game we're going to be opening. We visit a few different worlds, but uh, we glitch our way into those worlds. Probably a time for a donation or two here. Yeah, quite a long cutscene here. And there's quite a lot of donations coming in for this run already. Okay, uh, first one here, $599 from an anonymous gifter. It says, it's great to see Duck and Panjo back at GDQ. Special shout outs to Connor and the whole couch. And then we got $100 here from Honeydew Taco saying, hello again, Duck, another run. GDQ just can't seem to get enough of you. <laughs> Here's to a blueless potion run and some speedy banjo. Thanks again to GDQ for bringing us together for an amazing cause. Yeah, blueless potion. That's true, we got red. Slip in a quick $30 one here from Hobby Tan that says, sassy but supportive bird noises. Less than three. All right, so now that that cutscene is over with, the first level of the game, Mayhem Temple, is open. So now it is just a matter of going there. And since we don't need any more jiggies, the route is mainly going to involve getting a couple of moves that are needed in the final boss fight, and, but mostly just getting notes. So there are 315 notes that are required in this route to get clockwork eggs. So going through these first couple levels, uh, we're going to be getting nearly all of the notes, all of the ones that are fast, at least, in our direct path. So coming up here, we will get all 100 notes in this level and learn the first move of the game from Jam Jars. Yeah, and what's really interesting about that is I can very easily skip to the final boss of the game quite a bit faster, but uh, I need five moves to even be able to fight her. So. That's part of the speed run. Get the moves as quickly as you can, and then go to the final boss. Yeah, and each of these moves has about a 10% chance where Jam Jars will do an animation where he bonks his head, re-entering the silo. And that can lose, depending on lag, like around probably about five seconds on average. But uh, that first one was good. Yeah. We'll see if we get any bonks. No bonks so far. Throw some clean movement back there to the Trouble Club. Yep. Always fun. Already have all 100 notes from this first world. Yep, and the two moves that I need. Will he bonk? Nope. No good. bonk. Nice. Being nice to me today, I guess. And just like that, we're done with the first level. No jiggies needed. So very quick. And up next, uh, we will be going to the plateau area, which would normally require the grip grab ability but it's pretty easy to skip requiring that with a simple backflip, beak bust, and he's up there. He's a cake. And um, next trick coming up actually is called um, Glitter Gulch Mine Early. So what we're gonna be seeing here is a precise beak bust 
that's going to be between the, the wooden frame and the grate. So usually you would have to get four jiggies and you go through the jiggy wiggy puzzle to do this, but we're just going to skip right through that since we only have to get one jiggy. Yeah. I really wish skipping opening the other levels was this easy. This one's kind of precise, but the other ones make this look like a joke. And this is still one that was found somewhat recently in 2018 by uh, Captain Cole running around just trying to jump through the gap, and he found that it he accidentally clipped through just Second like try. that. Nice. Like that. Nice. Easy. So for Glitter Gulch Mine, uh, we also need to do some quick note collecting. Um, and then I guess one of you can talk about the DCW glitch I'm going to be setting up here while I uh, grab these notes. Yeah, so the other big reason besides notes that we come here is we're going to transform into uh, the detonator, which uh, will set up the first part of a wrong warp that we call uh, delete cutscene skip. Uh, it's kind of a two-part setup, and the first part will be coming up here. But uh, yeah, we, first we have to go collect all these notes and then we'll transform in Wumba's Wigwam, which we'll be entering in one second. Yeah, and there was a lot of lag reduction that he was doing through that section. banjo Two is known for being a pretty laggy game, so for all of these long movement sections, it's really impressive to see the lag reduction where you can't see where you're going at all, just trying to take the quickest path possible, not having any lag. Yeah, especially in a short category like this one, it, it really matters a lot. And for this category, we don't have to collect any more Globos. This is like the only transformation. Yeah, so we are on our way to Fuel Depot here, where there is, if you've ever played the game, there's the Saucer Peril minigame. Uh, it's in this box coming up here, and we just want to do the first part of this cutscene, which will set up the box to enter Witchy World later, but we won't We'll only be doing this part right now. We'll have to go to Witchy World a bit later. So we're going to collect all these notes, or 185. And yeah, this may seem like we're coming out of the way here just to get the detonator, blow up this rock. Like, why is it so important? When this warp was found, it saved two hours in any percent. <laughs> yeah, it was a <laughs> huge find that completely uh, changed how Banditui was run. It skips over Tower of Tragedy, and that, that saves a lot of time right there alone. So we're just going to save and quit here. It's much faster than de-transforming and going where we need to go next. Maybe a good time for a couple donations before we head to the next section. Mm -hmm. All righty, here's $25 from Kawi that says, Duck, it's so great to see you live at GDQ again. Charity plus banjo, how could it possibly get any better? You got this. $20 here from RPD234 saying, So he's finally here. <laughs> Running for you if you know the... Oh, wrong Rare series. Great game. <laughs> oh, true. $200 here from Hustler Bo Jenkins that says banjo Tui is my girlfriend's favorite game, so I wanted to get a dono in during the game. Let's go, SGDQ! <laughs> Definitely the best Banjo game we're playing here tonight. <laughs> what? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> true. What you saying? I mean, I love banjo Tui, but... I'm a huge fan of Banjo-Kazooie as well. So right now we're heading to Pine Grove. Uh, we're going to go to Witchy World. And maybe notice we haven't opened Witchy World yet, as well as Gleagle's Mine, but we'll also be entering this one early. Uh, we'll be using a bit clip, which was referenced earlier. Uh, first we're gonna learn grenade eggs, get a couple notes here. But a bit clip is it's named after 8-Bit Beast, shout out to 8-Bit Beast, and Ring Rush for finding setups for this. But what we're going to be doing is setting up to a very, very specific spot. It's about a hundred thousandths of a unit, and we basically need to do a bunch of angle buffers. We need a specific amount of lag, and yeah, it's, it's just incredibly specific. Yeah, it is virtually impossible to get into this spot just by walking into it. So Duck is going to reset his position completely by entering this silo and then leaving it 
to get in a consistent spot that is the same every time. And now by going into first person and moving the cursor to a certain very specific pixel perfect spot that he is looking at a laptop right now that has lines on it as a reference of where to put the cursor because it is that precise and you can't tell just by looking at the game. So he's doing uh, angle buffers there to get the exact angle needed to get closer to this pixel hun hundred thousandth of a decimal uh, the spot here. And he's doing a series of beak barges to get closer to the spot. And then we'll do a couple more angle buffers here using the lines as a reference on, on the laptop to hopefully get in the exact spot needed. Yeah, everything done here is even down to every single camera movement is incredibly specific and intentional. And if he just like wiggles his fingers for a little bit on these angle buffers and doesn't do it exactly in the right spot, then the entire setup is dead. He has to start over. Okay, so that's a failed attempt right there. Uh, not really sure what went wrong. It's really hard to tell a lot of times. Yeah. Sometimes it's not getting enough lag. Uh, sometimes it's also hard to tell if you were at the right angle. But yeah, this is the, the critical glitch that has saved 15 minutes in the any percent route. So it's absolutely still worth going for here until he gets it. Because it is a huge uh, time save not having to get all of the jiggies needed for Witchy World and JRL. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> that that's unlucky. unfortunate. That, yeah, unlucky. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> yeah, that, that guy can be a troublemaker. Is he going to hit me again? right next to you. <laughs> You get, get out of the way, please, sir. It's also important to note that there will be another one of these tricks later in the run. Yeah, 11 angle buffers here. And it is worth mentioning that he needs a lag frame during this part, and uh, yeah, that, go that's going to mess it yeah. up. Okay. And if he doesn't get that lag frame, then he'll just be ever so slightly off and not able to clip through the ground in a uh, very specific spot. That's what I think happened the first time. There's a little bit of randomness to this, unfortunately. And this enemy can be a big hard. pain. I think I can slide in some donations while we get this set up again. Sure. Here's $25 from Pipsweet that says, Good day, Australia, Colin. I had to donate again for Banjo-Tooie. Massive chunks of my childhood were invested in playing Banjo-Kazooie games. So, so happy to see the GDQ. I've also got $20 here from D-Pad Gamer that says, As a lifelong fan of Banjo-Kazooie and Tooie, I had to get my do donation in during this run. Can't wait to see the new Any% percent route. Good luck and have fun, duck. And real quick, here's $25 from Pack Attack saying, we are doing stop and swap, right? <laughs> Don't think so today. All right, let's see if he gets it here. So what we're looking for there, what you can tell you failed, is you're looking for Banjo's shadow on the pause buffer there. Banjo's shadow will not be visible. Oh, wait. You have no gold feathers. Yeah, I was about to say. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta get more gold feathers to try it again. Yeah, we need these feathers in case the enemy is being mean to us again. But what we're looking to do is clip okay. through the floor. I think I got another non-lag frame there. I feel like the setup's going well. So yeah, yeah. Like th we'll this this part already is incredibly difficult, but he hasn't even <laughs> gotten to the hardest part yet which is after he clips through the floor, he needs to pause the game. Uh, there are two possible frames to get that pause and then flutter into the loading zone. So he has to do this entire setup perfectly and then get a precise pause to make it past that Witchy World gate after clipping through the ground. Otherwise, you just fall and void out. And right there, he was pause buffering a pet cancel by bear punching and jumping uh, the frame after to move ever so slightly forward. 
There we go. Beautiful. Oh, oh <laughs> yes. Oh. I cannot believe I just got that trick. Well wow. Done. Well done. Very well. I, I thought we were doomed here. I'm not going to lie. Everybody Honestly, in this room, yeah. <laughs> I was not expecting to get that trick today. When, when this game <laughs> got into SGDU for the first one back in person, it was almost like, wow, how are we going to do this? Set this glitch up, not on your traditional setup where you have the lines in OBS, it can use the reference. So it's incredibly impressive to get this on a TV that you're not used to at all. And it's just nice that, you know, it didn't take five tries. What, how many was that? Three, four? It's all good. Yeah, still way faster than opening up Witchy World. Yeah. Yeah, it's still Feels great good that to show you, that off, too. Still great that you got that, like, first try, the hardest part, too. Yeah, that, that part. I'm pretty sure that the, the few times that I made it to the end of that trick and it didn't work was uh, due to the randomness factor that I was talking about before. You can't be 100% sure, but I was pretty confident in the setup. So it's nice that when the game gave me a shot, I was able to take it there. At the late frame as well. Yeah, so the rest of this Witchy World route is just collecting notes, really, uh, to get closer to that 315, but the the real important reason that we're in Witchy World is to finish this setup for the delayed cutscene warp using uh, that saucer cutscene that we started in Gl Glitter Gulch Mine as the detonator. Yeah, so as we finish collecting the rest of these nodes, we're going to head on over to the top of the Dodgem's Dome. And then we're going to shoot a grenade over to the button which opens the door to let the saucer of peril in. But just before, or just after the game saves, which the game saves on loading zones. So because this cutscene starts in Witchy World, goes to Glitter Ultra Mine, that comes back to Witchy World, the game will save right here, it kind of freezes, you'll see, and then we'll reset. And later on, the game will want to play the rest of that cutscene. However, uh, once we get back to the main menu coming up, we will be selecting where we would like to warp. So yeah, the next time we enter that room in Glitter Ultra Mine where the saucer was, uh, it will take us to the location of the cutscene that we've previously watched. So we can choose any cutscene here in the main menu on where is most convenient to work. So where do you think you're, we're going to go today, Duck? Where is best for you? Well, it would be nice if I could warp straight to the final boss. Oh, but look. I don't have the moves yet. So I'm warping to Tower to Quiz. That's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we can't enter the final boss without having uh, Clockwork Eggs or Beak... What, what, which one's it called? It's not Beak Bay in there. What's it called? Uh, Briegel Blaster. Blaster. Yeah, yeah the, that one. We need first person mode. Yes. We need those two moves to enter. The game just won't let you. So I got to do Glitter Gulch Mine early again. So I call it Glitter Gulch Mine slightly later. Again, he's going to need to get this precise beak bust in the uh, seam between the grate and plank there. There you go. Uh, Good try. <laughs> so right now we're basically, this is the delayed cutscene warp you're about to see. We're entering Fuel Depot. It's going to want to play the last cutscene, which it expects to be this. It wants to take you back to Witchy World after this, but instead... We're going to the end of Tower Day Quiz. Tower Day Quiz. It's kind of anticlimactic because all you do is just enter the room and you're there. Like, there, there's nothing special. You just enter the room and now we're at the end of the game. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we've got to do a little bit of backtracking before we can go to the final bosses right over here. And I could clip into it and uh, fight her. But first we have to go learn Clockwork Kazooie Eggs because they're required for the fight. So before I jump down, I'm going to tag this warp. Make sure I can come back here quickly. Not have to fight Klungo or actually do Tower to Quiz, which is called Tower of Tragedy on the English version. It's right there. That was just a beak bust recoil. You don't take damage if you come out of a recoil and just land wherever. So that's pretty nice. And there is a switch up here that can activate a spring pad to get up here faster, but the Duck is choosing to not hit that and will do a way cooler strat to get up there later. Mm -hmm. And I had to actually gold feather there because 
that uh, level has some lasers that would actually have, I have to go through them with invulnerability or I won't be able to go through them. Yeah, so we'll have to bypass those later since we don't have enough jiggies. Yeah, we will be doing something called Cauldron Keep early, which is also pretty precise, tricky glitch that can get me back into the area I just left so I can go fight the final boss. Cute little out of bounds kind of trick. Grab these last notes and learn clockworks. That's all the notes we'll be doing. Will I get a bonk this run? This is the last chance. Come on, Jam Jars, do it for the fans. Really begging for a bonk right now? <laughs> I don't know, the run's already dead. Oh, oh, oh. decided to be nice. Oh, well, this was perfectly executed. Yeah, that excellent <laughs> time new save time save found by Asmi there. Yeah, that saved about 0. 0.2 seconds. <laughs> yeah, 0. 0.2 seconds. Funny story, I was about to fall asleep on like Monday night, day two of the event, and someone messaged me on Discord saying, I found a time save in your speed run. So I told him I'd do it. So there it was, perfectly executed. So here's that cool trick we were talking about earlier. This is the PG teleportation special. Shout out to PG. We're going to take damage at the same time. First try. Clockwork. Nice, first try. The game wants to send you where the clockwork is as you take damage as Banjo, so you just end up teleporting up to this pipe. You can beat bust grab it. And now this is a precise spot he has to be in to clip out of bounds here. There we go. Nice. Nice. Perfect. Now all he has to do is jump through the loading zone right here. Yep. There we go. Bypass We're back in Cauldron Laser Keep. Gate. Now I have to do another bit clip. So let's hope this one doesn't take four more tries, but we'll see. This one is uh, also very difficult. <laughs> so warping up to the top here puts you in a, the same position every time, so... If you do fail it, you can reset quite easily, but uh, yeah, we'll see how this goes. Yeah, the, the setup with the, the angle buffers here and a couple beak barges, it's not as long as the Witchy World early one, but he still needs to get a frame-perfect pause that is by far the hardest part of this, and then flutter into the loading zone. Because if he pauses too early at the end of the setup, uh, he won't clip through the ground, or if he pauses too late, he will fall all the way and not be able to flutter into the final boss. Yeah, for Witchy World early, there, there's two frames where you can flutter, but for this one, there's there's unfortunately only one. Getting down to the end of the trick here. Oh, must have done something wrong. Okay, I think it was the very first uh, movements. Try it again real quick. As you can see, that was much shorter than Witchy World early, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and like this still just saves so much time being able to clip into the final boss like this instead of having to get all those other jiggies. Yeah, we would need 68 more to open this. Should be better now. There's 69 more, sorry. Yeah. Nice. 69, yeah. It's important. Try that. Yeah. It's got some epic cauldron keep music, though. It's some of my epic. personal favorite. Mm. Oh, okay. Pause a little too early there. It's that frame perfect. Gotta try again. Yeah, so that was the exact correct thousandth of a decimal unit. Perfect spot to be in, just paused a little too early. Yeah, and the good thing is if you pause early, you can kind of try to time it to un use unpause and then try to get the flutter without any buffer. But if you pause too late, you obviously can't do that. But unfortunately missed it on that one. Wasn't super confident in that one. All right. So yeah, there's a lot of things that could have gone wrong there. Any small wiggle of the cursor for these angle buffers could have been off.
There we go. Woo! Okay. There we go. <laughs> Done deal. <laughs> We're on the final boss. Yeah, that, that is super oh. impressive to Those do in naughty. person at, at an event like this. That is wild. <laughs> Pretty impressive. It's crazy precise, and then to get that frame perfect pause at the end in the loading zone, it's not easy to do that first try at all. Yeah, it was crazy how I did a first try. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and now we have a not that easy final boss. Yeah. It's actually a pretty hard final boss for the speed run, so it's not over yet. Yeah. But this is a really long cutscene if you want to do some donations. I know it's been a while. Oh, there are a lot here, trust me. Like All this right. $100 okay. donation from M. Zawardo saying, Let's go, Duck. My brother got me into video games with the Banjo-Kazooie game, so I found it fitting to donate during this game. Best of luck with the Pixel Perfect trick. First try, clearly. Yeah, first, both of them first try. <laughs> $25 here from Vicarious Vice that says, Guh huh? $25 here from Pukai that says, First time catching this live, gotta say, I'm loving it. Good luck, Duck. $100 here from the King's Pride that says, One of my earliest memories is of playing Banjo-Kazooie and Tui with my mom. Shoutouts to the coolest mom in the world. You're the best. And $25 here from Bruce C that says, More vengeance is always necessary. The memes, Jack. Make sure you're putting some donations towards that Revengeance Blade Wolf DLC run, which is at $74.94 of $25,000. All right, so we may be through the difficult clips and glitches, but like Duck was saying, this is a difficult final boss in itself. Uh, I know that my casual playthrough, this took like two hours to get, period. And having only five health in this any percent route, and I think you entered with less than five. Uh-oh. Well, that's fine. <laughs> Good thing for every phase, she drops a health, so. Oh, okay, we're already down to two health. <laughs> it's okay. It's So you'll notice right here that Duck starts shoot. He shoots one fire egg, and then he'll switch to grenade eggs, and you can rapid fire grenade eggs. And normally grenade eggs would shoot really slow, but they do a lot more damage. However, if you shoot a fire egg beforehand, you can switch quickly to grenades, and then you can just fire them off really fast. And then right here, you can avoid these mortars by just jumping on this drill right here. Zoom up, a little lag reduction. I mean, when Grunty is talking like this, uh, she's actually giving you uh, trivia questions to answer. And if you get one of them right, uh, she will slow down her attacks, but takes time to answer her questions in a speed run. So that's slower. And he's just mashing through them instead, automatically getting it wrong, because we don't need to, to slow down those attacks at all. Again, he can stand up here on top of the drill to be safe from the mortars. Yeah, the big strategy for this boss is really just don't die. It seems pretty obvious. Yeah, and getting yeah. these quick hits with the grenades is not as easy as it looks. And yeah, during these next two phases, um, she's going to drive around quite a bit. And so I need to refill my eggs because I'm pretty low on grenades and blue eggs, which I'm going to need for the end of the fight. But while I'm doing that, I'm going to be trying to, as much, much as I can, reduce lag as well, which will save a lot of time because this is a laggy, laggy game. So try to get grenades and blue eggs here. Some blue eggs. I'll go to the next one. Get some grenades here. Might be able to get some more.
whatever. <laughs> or not. <laughs> Don't eat them. Health is good, though. It's also important that when you do like the rapid grenades like that, you want to do it where Grunty will only throw like one green fireball at you. Because if you do it too slow, she'll throw two and that just loses a little bit of time. Right here we're blowing up uh, one of the batteries inside with a clockwork egg to stop this thing from moving around. Okay, at this point, he's all good on eggs, so it's just a matter of finishing this side out clean. A little lag reduction right there, just standing on the slope. Takes the digger off the screen a bit. Here we have one more hit with the fast grenades on her, and then he will shoot a clockwork inside, blow up that final battery that will uh, stop tag one from being able to move around. And also remove the lasers. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> Those clockworks have a massive explosion radius. All right, as we're getting down to the, the final wire here, just again, like to thank GDQ for having me. Always a pleasure. It was really fun last night. It's really fun tonight. Thanks to everyone on my couch. If you've enjoyed watching Banjo-Tooie, then uh, check out the community. You know, it doesn't always have to end with GDQ. Oh. And yeah, if you like Banjo-Kazooie, Banjo-Tooie, or Mario Party speedruns, you can follow my Twitch, twitch.tv slash duck. Definitely follow all my commentators too for both of the runs. They were fantastic as well. Yeah, really, the rest of this boss fight is just shooting Grunty enough. You want to get her down to, to zero. We're at 15 now. Yeah, so be one more quick cycle of those blue eggs to get her down to one, and then the very difficult, tricky final hit. Yeah, the tricky thing about the final hit, you, she just has to be holding the, the ball above her head. There's like a purple little spell she's going to throw at you. You just want to hit it immediately while she's holding it. Done. Time. Time. Sorry. <laughs> Forgot to mention, that's time. <laughs> Thank you. Let's go. Thanks so much, everybody. I know we went a little overestimate, but I'm really happy I got to show off those tricks because they are tough. But anyways, yeah, thanks so much. And if you are interested in Banjo-Kazooie uh, or Tui or any Banjo game speedrunning, there's a, a really nice Banjo series Discord. I just joined it myself. Seemed chill, drama-free. So, you know, seek out the Banjo Discord and you can learn about any Banjo speedrun you want. Anything from you guys? Great run. Great job. Thank you. Great job. Yeah. <laughs> Super impressive. All Thank right. Letting us be on the couch. Thanks for having us, yeah. Cool. No tanks nor walls can stop this speedrunner. What a great Banjo Tooie run. One last donation here from me. This is $25 from Kitty Cannoli, and oh boy, this will be fun. Banjo don't jiggy wiggy, he clips. I want to see him tricky tricky, quick skips. It makes me silly giggle in bits. One foot three in a backpack, no slack. But luckily his beak go quack. Duck got a knack to react to his line, hitting some fast, fast speed lines. Okay, that's that. <laughs> Thank you for that $25 donation, Kitty Cannoli. Clearly, I don't use the clock app. Anyways, my friends, this is the end of my time on the mic for this event. Thank you all for helping such an amazing cause, and thank you for giving me irreplaceable memories and new people I can call friends. The GDQ community is truly something special, and I'm so happy I found it. I'm going to leave you in the sweet and sultry voice of an eternal enigma just after a quick break here. Thank you all so much.
All right, we are back here at Summer Games Done Quick 2022, powered by Twitch. I am an eternal enigma. Thank you very much for joining us. We are here to benefit Doctors Without Borders. We've already raised 884 thousand dollars thank you all very much for your contributions and i hope you will keep them on the way here now speed running is not limited to agdq and sgdq you can watch every weekday night at 7 p.m eastern and weekends at 1 p.m eastern here on games done quick with hot fix we have 22 different shows with specials on the weekend for more information, go to gamesdonequick.com slash hotfix. All right, we are currently getting set up for our next run here. It'll be a waifu with Devil May Cry. But for the meantime, I just want to remind you, since I'm here for the first time, you're hearing me from the host desk for the first time, this event, just want to remind you exactly why we are here for this event this week. And it is so good to be back in person for the first time in two and a half years that I just can't wait to tell you that we are here to raise money for Doctors Without Borders. Doctors Without Borders, or MSF, is an international medical humanitarian aid organization providing life-saving medical humanitarian care in over 70 countries around the world. MSF is committed to independence, impartiality, and neutrality. These principles are what make it possible for MSF to respond rapidly to emergencies and provide life-saving medical care in situations where many other organizations can't or won't. 90% of MSF staff is national, meaning they live locally and are from the country where they work. And again, we are getting set up for our next run here, but we have had some donations come in and I want to see more arrive, if you would not mind. We are at $884,000. We are so close to 900 k Thank you all very much to everybody who has contributed and will contribute to this amazing event. And let's see here. Let's just, let's just go through the list. Let's see what we have here. We, we have, just, just to get some hype going for this room here, I know it's the overnight hours, but I just want to let everybody know they can hear the sound of my voice. We've got an anonymous $1,000 donation. Oh, yes. With a very short but sweet message that I think echoes all of our sentiments. They say, I love GDQ. Anonymous, thank you very much for the $1,000. Thank you very much. We have $25 here from Astoreal, who says, longtime watcher, longtime donator. Keep up the splendid work, everyone. $25 from Mr. Shadow Ant, who says, these fantastic speed runs tonight have been well worth staying up for. Thank you to the dedicated runners. Still had some donations that came in for the Banjo-Tooie run, which was excellent, such as this one from Eggplant Parma, who sends over $250 and says, love seeing this Banjo-Tooie run in the original. I always wished I could break through walls to get that mysterious ice key. So it's wild to see that frame-perfect clip. Yes, indeed it was. Thank you, Eggplant. Thank you for the 250.
We've got a $250 donation here. One of these 250 donations from B Dog, who says, first time donating and not sure what message to leave here. It was my best friend Ethan's birthday on the 27th, though. He's a longtime fan, and he got me into GDQ, and now I have, uh, now I literally have to watch every summer and winter. Happy birthday, Ethan. Also, sharing is caring, so donation goes to host choice. Do you want to take a moment here to uh, congratulate everybody who has been just absolutely destroying these challenges. The Devil May Cry legendary cutscene was met. We have the Deer Simulator. Uh, the, the, the DLC miscellaneous showcase was met. And I, I, it's been incredible seeing all these challenges in Bitwars. Speaking of challenges, the next one that you would need to meet, we have the Metal Gear Solid Revengeance Blade Wolf DLC run. That'll be at $25,000, currently sitting at about $77.90. So get your donations in for that. Our next bid war is also the hat choice for Turnip Boy Commits Tax Evasion. So if you would like your choice of the bird hat, the top hat, the fedora, the ball, the sun hat, construction hat, farmer hat, crown, explorer hat, almost turned that into a song. Get your donations in for the bid war as well. Couldn't resist, I'm sorry. We have a $100 donation here from Gamer0024. It says, SGDQ is so much fun to see. Everything is so quick. How can that be? You're telling me. Thank you for the $100. Oh, this is a good one here for everybody in the audience right now. We have a $25 donation from Opaque Dreamer who says, here's to the audience going strong at 3 a.m. Oh, yes. Says, no matter when I look, there's always someone in the seats. You all give me life. Opaque, you give us life. Thank you for the $25. $200 here from EXL Hollywood, who says, first time donator, but long time watcher. So amazed at watching these amazing runners decimating their games to oblivion. So excited to watch the rest of the runs. Good luck to all the runners. We have $25 here from Kodiaks, who says, come on, let's get that sound Voltex into SGDQ. Who wouldn't love more SGDQ? No one, that's who. Love all you brave runners and stalwart techies. You are all heroes to us all. And Kodiaks, thank you very much for the donation. And thank you for giving me a reminder to tell the audience here that our next bonus game is indeed Sound Voltex Exceed Gear. That will be met at $200,000, currently sitting at $16,000. Let me take a quick look here at our schedule. If that bonus game is met, that will be at... Give me just a moment to look at the schedule. That'll be at 1031 local time. So we are currently sitting at about... 325 so we're looking at about maybe 19 hours so you so the time is ticking it is going down quick for bonus games sound voltex so make sure you get your donations no donations in for that thank you for the reminder kodiaks got a good donation here that Shouts out our last run and also hypes up our next run. We got $25 from Miss Kazumi who says, back-to-back -back favorite games in Banjo and Devil May Cry. What a way to start my morning. $100 from So Fresh Sales says, Happy GDQ, everyone. Good luck burning the midnight oil for some great and silly speed runs. That's right. After Devil May Cry, it'll be the silly block. So that is a good reminder to tell you that'll be coming up too. Thank you, So Fresh Sales.
We have $100 from Connor Gale, who says, great speed runs and an even greater cause. Keep up the great work. $100 from Anonymous, who says, awesome games and awesome prizes. I love GDQ. Donation goes to more GDQ. I mean, bonus game. Let's go. We have $25 from Blend, who says, GDQ has been a part of my life for so long and I'm so glad to finally be able to donate. Hello to everyone toughing it out overnight for some cool runs and hope everyone isn't too tired to keep going. <laughs> Blend, I think you got an answer to your question there. We are never too tired. Thank you very much. Oh, here we go. We're going to have a little fun here while we're getting... Uh, Set up for our next run. I guess it's time for fun with the host. We have $10 from Ikasama. I hope I said that correct. It says, paying some hard-earned cash to hear Enigma say all those hat choices again, but faster? Okay, all right, all right. I'll, for MSF, you got it. Let me pull up. Let me remind everybody what we're talking about here if you just joined us. Our next Bid Wars Turnip Boy commits tax evasion, the hat choice, and you wanted to hear the hat choices faster. How about the bird hat, the top hat, the fedora, the bald, sun hat, construction hat, farmer hat, crown of the explorer hat? That was all right. That was all right. That was all right. But thank you, Ikasama. Thank you. Just a reminder, we are getting set up for our next run. It's going to be Waifu with Devil May Cry. But while we're getting set up for that, we are just about $15,000 away from 900K. So keep your donations coming on in and I will be happy to read what I can. Thank you all very much for everybody who has donated as, as, as of right now and will in the future. Thank you all again. We'll never thank you enough. Thank you. We have $100 from Chef Brent, who says, thank you so much, GDQ, for all that you do to promote these fantastic causes with these spectacular runs. And Chef, thank you. We mentioned the challenges in the bid wars. I also want to tell you a little bit about the prizes. I'm no cent, of course, but I'll tell you a little bit about what we have here. For $25, a minimum of $25, you have the fully assembled GBA uh, consoleizer. You have $15, the Cedric the Owl Amigurumi, if I said that correct. $25 for the Turnip Boy plush. Just a little example of some of the prizes that you can, that you can get here for donating to Doctors Without Borders. And make sure that when you do that, you check on the prizes down below so that you get qualified for those. And if you put towards a challenge or a bid war, 
that you select those as well. Want to make sure that if you are going for any of those, that you have everything properly selected down there on the donation page. Don't want to get anything lost, so make sure it is so easy to do. Just don't forget about it, and thank you all to everybody who has. We have $25 from Lil Trouble, who says, sending the hype from Australia. <laughs> GG so far, everyone. Let's go for the one mil. Mm-hmm. See, we have somebody who was paying attention. We have a $20 donation from Sib who says, I saw a Kirby prize, so I donated again. I'm a simple man. <laughs> We have a $100 donation from Chelsea who says, Twitch chat is the cutest. Less than three. Good evening from Australia. And happy GDQ to everyone participating and watching. See Twitch chat, excuse me, Twitch chat. How about a Twitch cat? That'd be interesting. Twitch chat. We've been talking about the live audience here. This is your time to shine. How cute are you? Can you meet this challenge? How cute is the Twitch chat right now? Oh, I'm looking at you. I see it. I see, I see some cuteness in that chat right now. Show me some more. While we're getting set up for this next run, show me the cuteness in the chat, if you will. <laughs> 